Hello students, in this video we'll discuss Green's Theorem. If we're given a simple closed curve C in R2, we have that the flow integral over the closed curve, C, of a vector field V dot t hat, the unit tangent vector of the curve, ds, the arc length element, is equal to the double integral over the interior of the closed curve, the interior of the closed curve, C, of partial q partial x minus partial p partial y dA where the vector field V of x and y is p of x, y, i hat plus q of x, y, j hat. And so in particular, remember that Green's Theorem is a two-dimensional thing. It only works in the plane. So the context of Green's Theorem is the following. What you have is you have r2. Here's your x and here's your y. You have a vector field. There's your vector field. And you have a simple closed curve. So what you have is you're going to have a curve like this. And the closed curve C, one thing we should mention here, this curve C has to be oriented anti-clockwise. Otherwise, the sign changes. So it has to be oriented anti-clockwise. So it goes around like this, opposite to that of a clock. And this vector field given here is really P comma Q. And this is your curve over here, C. And what this does is this is an analog of the fundamental number of calculus. So if we recall, recall that the integral from A to B of f prime of x dx is equal to f of b minus f of a. That's just the fundamental theorem of calculus. And what it does, it relates an area over here. This integral is an area under the graph of f prime to a length on the y-axis. That's a length. So the fundamental theorem of calculus relates an area to a length. Over here, what do we have? Over here, in some sense, what we're doing is we're computing this flow integral, which has the units of an area, and we're relating it to this double integral, which has the units of a volume. So you're relating a three-dimensional thing to a two-dimensional thing is the exact same flavor as the fundamental theorem of calculus, which relates a two-dimensional thing to a one-dimensional thing. It's a dimensional reduction technique. Very powerful, but it's only true in what context? It's only true in the context of R2. It's not true in R3 or R4 or R5 or higher dimensions. There are different theorems that we're going to need to understand to understand those dimensional reductions in higher dimensions. So when we're talking about this version of Green's theorem, let's make some remarks about this. So remark is that simple and closed means the curve looks something like this. What would not simple be? Not simple it would look something like this where the curve crosses itself, and the curve might double back on itself also. So if the curve doubles back on itself, like this. So we don't want the curve to double back, and we don't want the curve to cross. So no doubling back, and no crossings, self-intersections. So for example, a rectangle or a circle or a triangle are all examples of simple closed curves. And whereas something like an infinity symbol or a more complex polar curve would not be a simple closed curve. Now, to illustrate how this is useful, for example, let's look at one particular example how we would just write this out. So if our curve C looked like this, so if here's the x-axis and here's the y-axis, and if our curve C did this, there's 3, there's 2, if it went like this from 0, 0 to 0, 3, then up to 3, 2, then back over to 0, 2, then back down to 0, 0, if that was your curve C, then what you'd have, you'd have the integral over C of PQ dot T hat DS, 
That's your vector field V. So that's in the background of this problem. So in this problem, there's also a vector field, right? The vector field occurs all over R2. There's your vector field. Like so. That's your vector field V will be the integral. Well, where does x go from this region? x goes from 0 to 3. y goes from 0 to 2. It's a rectangle, so you have very simple in this integration of partial q, partial x, minus partial p, partial y. And then we're going to have a dy dx. So instead of doing this flow integral, we can do this double integral over a rectangle. And that oftentimes makes the calculation of the flow integral a lot simpler. Thank you very much.